So if you have got the board working correctly, so you, you and then you test it that the UDP messages go to the time server and you get the timestamp. The next step is of course to start trying that can you send your own messages and can you receive your something some something like your own messages? Because in the UDP you are sending any characters over any ASCII symbols from the ASCII symbol table. So what you're sending there is the characters from the ASCII symbol table. So ASCII code.com might be reliable source or not. So what you are sending out is the these symbols. So these are the symbols. Wait a second. No. Yeah, you have it in the symbol and the description. So like there are these special symbols like for controlling things. And then there are symbols for the uh, like the special characters on the keyboard. And then there are numbers. So when you send a character one, you are sending this 8-bit information. When you are sending a character two, you are sending that eight bits. When you are sending character three, you are sending that eight bits. So if you are sending uh, numbers one, two, three, the length of your message is three bytes because it's sending over that byte, that byte, and that byte. When you are sending their text, like, a, like the capital letter A, B, C, if you are sending these A, B, C as a text, you are sending that byte, that byte, and that byte. The length of your message is three bytes. And for sending those messages, it's good to have the use the uh, smartphone. So for the smartphone, so you can uh, download an UDP sender receiver application. So just go to the App Store or the or the uh, for the Android applications also the store. What is the name? But anyway, and this is for the Android, the UDP sender receiver. And then anything which seems to be UDP sender receiver, a popular uh, application, and you can try. This seems to be rather easy to use. So you just define here on the window that your local port. So this is the port number on your smartphone. And then you define the remote IP address and the port number. And then when you start sending, uh, when you have to start listening, so start listening and you send to your, to the address of your smartphone, you should get this kind of message. So it is printing that uh, what is the IP address where it is coming from and what is the port number it is coming from and then the content of the message. Uh, 
and what you need to do is then you should study that how this socket is built. What are the methods in here? And then you need to like modify the uh, program I have given you as a starting point and then you are sending to a certain address, which is the address of your mobile phone, the IP address. It is of course easiest to do if you have a wireless LAN network at home, you connect your mobile phone to that VLAN network and then you connect your uh, microcontroller with that ESP module to the same VLAN network. Then go into the router of your VLAN network, have a look at what IP addresses those have got. And then you can start sending the messages in between these two devices. If you have a smartphone only and no VLAN network, but you're sharing the VLAN from your smartphone, well, that one I haven't tested, so I'm not sure if the smartphone ha seems to be there in a normal router address. So it's it's got the IP address. The last number there is is one. If it is the like normally the router is in the num address one. But then, yeah, with this, you should start building your own application on sending the. UDP messages, messages in between your microcontroller application and this kind of phone app. 